Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? It is Cheese and Trees here, back at it again with another YouTube video. And today, I have a full Icarus food, cooking, and farming guide for you. Before we get into today's video, I just want to let you know that I forgot a couple things in the video that I'm going to go over really quickly. So for the tier 2 foods, you will need a stone furnace for the cooking bench and the pot belly stove. For the tier 3 foods, you will need an anvil to make copper nails for the kitchen bench and the biofuel stove and the storage block. And also, for the biofuel stove, you will need a cement mixer to make the biofuel composter to make the biofuel for the biofuel stove. Also in the video, I realized that I didn't talk about refrigeration. I, in the video, am using refrigerators, which are tier 4, and use generators and biofuel and all that stuff to power so that is a full grind but at tier two they make an ice box and you just need to gather ice to put in it for fuel to refrigerate your foods those are the only things that i believe i forgot in the video Without further ado, I'm going to try and keep this intro short because the video is long, so enjoy the video. Alright guys, the first thing I want to talk about before we get into the foods is the crop plots. The crop plot can be found very early on in the tier 2 tech tree. You just need the crafting bench to craft it. You need 8 wood and 10 sulfur. Very easily accessible very good for teams just in case you find it hard to be getting foods uh, for your team or very good for solo when food is scarce like squash so that's the first reason you would use a crop plot in this game uh, the second reason I've found you might want to use the crop plot in this game is location of your base I found that some food is only found in specific locations like corn and the last reason I can think of to maybe grow food would be stack size some foods only stack to 10 high and if you're in big groups that might be an issue with keeping food refrigerated because of storage issues things like that so maybe melons and like I said corn only stacks to 10 as well so those would be the the main reasons I would grow food in Icarus. Again, very quickly before we get into the current foods in Icarus, I do want to talk about Icarus and the future of cooking and farming. Very recently there have been many changes to carrots in the game. So if you look in here, carrots can be refrigerated now, whereas before they could not. And previous to the most recent update, uh, carrots didn't even spoil, so I believe that's why there was no need to refrigerate them. So, so now, it can be refrigerated, and they do spoil. So, just keep that in mind. Um, previously, I was going to recommend choosing carrots as a food to possibly grow because they spoiled and you could not put them in the refrigerator but now that the stack size is so high it's it's at a hundred and you can uh, put them in the in the refrigerator to preserve them I don't see the need to grow them at this time also I wanted to point out mushrooms are an ingredient in Icarus that are not currently in the game but some foods I will not go over because they're not currently in the game are the soybean stir fry, which is a very which is one that I will be using in the future it looks like. And the stew. I will most definitely be using this one in the future. They have very nice buffs and both of those 
ingredients use carrots as well so just keep that in mind could possibly be why the carrot stack size is so high right now is because you'll be using them more in the future last thing about future Icarus I want to talk about is tier 4 currently we do not have the electric stove and with the electric stove comes the advanced kitchen sink the advanced advanced kitchen storage and the advanced kitchen bench so once those come out in the game depending on how much content there is within these and within future updates of Icarus I may do a future video all right now guys we are going to get into all the foods in Icarus up to date I'm going to start off with the tier 1 foods, but before I do that, I'm going to explain a couple things. First thing I want to explain is raw food versus cooked food. Some foods in this game can be eaten raw without being sick, and some foods you don't even have to cook, like berries and melons. You just pick them up off the ground and eat them. Some foods will make you sick raw, such as pumpkins, squash, fish meat and other foods won't make you sick but also will not gives you buffs unless they are cooked so you can eat the carrots and the corn for food you can they, they'll provide you with food in your food bar but they will not provide you with a food buff unless you have I don't know which talent it is. ah here it is Raw food increases health regeneration, so if you eat raw foods, then you'll get um, a small buff from that. Not super worth it unless you're planning on going down the cooking and farming tree, in my opinion. But, continuing on. Just really quickly, I want to explain that all of these foods are in the max stack size for your convenience and mine, so I don't have to explain max stack sizes for each and every one of the foods. So every food I show you in this video will be at max stack size. And one more thing, you can cook all these tier one foods on the campfire or the fireplace right here in tier two but it doesn't really make it a tier one food if you use the fireplace it's just more convenient to use the fireplace sometimes if you have well obviously if you have one it's more convenient to use it just gives you more space I don't believe it cooks foods more quickly I believe you just have more space to cook food and you don't have to risk setting yourself or anything in the house on fire when you use it so that's that's when I wanted to show you the difference between the, the campfire and the fireplace but now actually getting in to the tier 1 foods showing all the foods and as I show these tier 1 foods I'm gonna explain the buffs for every single food but I'm not going to do that for the tier 2 and tier 3. Just, just remember the buffs for the tier 1 foods. And these are the buffs that will carry on with these ingredients as you make foods in tier 2 and tier 3. And I assume in tier 4 once it's added in the game. So for example, if you take a pumpkin, a recipe with a pumpkin and a squash in it, both of these provide you with plus 75 maximum stamina so those will probably stack but the pumpkin will give you exposure resistance and the squash will give you melee damage so if you combine these then you will get maximum stamina exposure resistance and melee damage so just keep that in mind when I'm explaining the rest of the foods in the tier 2 and tier 3 also in this video I'm not going to explain which buffs you should use because I believe they are all situational. For example, the oxygen consumption buffs and the water consumption buffs are good for long trips so you don't have to use water and oxygen very much. 
or they're good for early game when you don't have oxygen tanks and water skins or canteens. So, uh, stamina buffs seem to be very um, common in foods, which are always good all around because you're always using stamina with whatever you do. And health buffs are good for when you plan on fighting higher higher tier enemies and stuff like that. So just keep in keep that in mind. I'm not going to tell you which which ones to to use and which combos to use for that reason because different combinations are are better for different situations. I know I said we were about to get into the tier 1 foods about 50 different times now, but now we're actually getting in to the tier 1 foods and their buffs. So all these foods up here are the raw foods and all these foods right here are the cooked foods with the exception of the watermelon because you don't need to cook the watermelon that's raw so we have the wild berry which gives you plus 50 maximum stamina minus 10 percent water consumption we have the watermelon which gives you plus 50 maximum stamina minus 10% oxygen consumption. We have the grilled pumpkin, which gives you 75% maximum stamina and 5% exposure resistance. We have the rose squash, which gives you 75% maximum stamina and 5% melee damage. We have the barbecue carrot, which gives you 75% maximum stamina 5% projectile damage. We have the charred corn, which gives you 75% maximum stamina and minus 10% stamina consumed by actions. It's a personal favorite of mine. And we have the cooked fish, which gives you plus 75 maximum health and plus 20% stamina regeneration. Also down here, we have our meats. We have our cooked meat from the raw meat, which gives you plus 75 maximum health and 20% health regeneration. And we have right here our prime meat, which is found in higher tier animals, which gives you plus 100 maximum stamina, plus 150 maximum health, plus 20 health regeneration per minute, and plus 5 experience gained. I do want to note that if you get prime meat, the raw prime meat will cook, I mean, I'm sorry, not will cook, will spoil three minutes after the animal that you got it from is skinned, and it will take one minute to fully cook that prime meat, at least on a campfire. I'm not sure if it cooks faster on a biofuel stove or a or a potbelly stove or any other or or any other place, but on a campfire it takes roughly one minute to cook. So you have two minutes to get this raw prime meat to a campfire or a refrigerator before it will spoil on you. So just keep that in mind. I, it is technically a tier one food, but it is probably the hardest tier one food to be able to get. It's, it's not going to be a common tier one food that you're going to be able to find. All right, moving on to the tier two foods, and I wanted to start off with flatbread, and I just want to mention really quickly that I put this in tier two foods. It can be cooked on the campfire, but I put it in tier two foods because it requires craft, you need the crafting bench to get the herbalism bench to then craft the flat red dough, which you would cook on the campfire to make the flatbread. So, and also want to mention, you also need, need this bad boy, the mortar and pestle, to be able to create 
the flour that you make with wheat, as you see. <laughs> so you make the flour with wheat. Then you turn that flour into the flatbread dough. And then you turn the flatbread dough into the flatbread on the campfire stove. So it's a very early tier two food, I would say, but I, that's why I put it in tier two. All right, we are moving on to the cooking station right here. You will see it is tier two. It is right here and is crafted at the crafting bench. So you still need the crafting bench for this one as well. Get the cooking station. And voila, you can craft here animal fat which does not spoil anything I leave in the cooking benches in the video right here will not spoil and anything in the refrigerators will spoil so just keep that in mind in the future for this video so moving on to what you can craft that will spoil if you do not have refrigeration the creamed corn the wild salad and the fruit salad. All the easy things to craft. Corn animal fat, pumpkin squash. Now moving on to the pot belly stove. This requires fuel to craft items. So you can use the comet coal, which is from the workshop outside of the prospect or you can, inside the prospect, you can use coal ore, fiber, sticks, or wood. So right now I have coal ore in there. But anything you craft on here will spoil. And I do wanna note that the prime meat, anything you uh, use fuel for, you can cook the prime meat on. So this tier one quote unquote tier one prime meat. You can cook on anything that has that uses fuel. So moving on. On the pot belly stove you can cook fish curry, roast vegetables, and sweet corn soup. Currently those are the only th three things that you can cook on the potbelly stove that you can't cook on anything else in the game. Another thing I forgot to mention, potbelly stove just right above the cooking station. So once you have the cooking station, you go up, get the potbelly stove. In my opinion, the potbelly stove cooks much better food with better buffs than the cooking station. So I would suggest investing in the potbelly stove even though it's more expensive materials wise and it burns fuel it's it's worth getting all right moving on to our tier three items we will start off with our kitchen bench our kitchen bench here is crafted in tier three at our machining bench so you will need a machining bench to craft your kitchen bench and also if you will notice the kitchen bench requires refined wood to craft refined wood if you're not aware is all the way back here in tier two at near the end at our carpentry bench so that is where you'll make your refined wood This is our carpentry bench right here. And there you will see one wood gives you 10 refined wood. Just like one wood gives you 10 sticks. So keep that in mind. All right, now that we have our kitchen bench, we can also, if you would like, craft a kitchen storage block. It is very good for storage.
you will need a blueprint to craft bread dough, berry jam, wine, and beer at the kitchen bench. But I will go into the bread dough. Bread dough. I will go into bre bread dough in a little bit. I'm going to wait out this storm. And I'll be right back. Alright, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by the Icarus gods, I'm going to talk about bread dough a little bit later. I'm going to start off by talking about the pastry and the pickled carrot, which do not need blueprint points to be put into to craft. You get these automatically with the kitchen bench. The pastry is one animal fat that you saw from earlier at the cooking station, one flour and water that you can get from your container. It can be a water skin, a canteen, but you need a container for water. And these pastries, you do not eat directly. As you can see, you can't eat them, but they are used in future recipes. Now the pickled carrot it only takes one carrot and one glass jar. So, you will get the glass jar at the glass working bench right here that you craft at your machining bench. To craft your machining bench, your glass working bench. You already have your machining bench crafted because you have your you need that for your kitchen bench and your all, all your stuff over here, your kitchen storage block, and we'll talk about the biofuel stove. <laughs> and at the glass working bench, you can craft your glass jar, your beer bottle, and your wine bottle. You'll need the beer bottle and the wine bottle, obviously, to craft the beer and the wine. Moving on. One carrot, one glass jar. And for berry jam, that's the one that you have to learn in the tech tree. It's five berries, one glass jar. I do want to show you something with these jarred foods real quick. Say you're going on an adventure and you're like, I want to take the berry jam and the pickled carrot and the yada yada and those are going to be my three buffs. So you're out on your adventure, and you eat your pickled carrot, yum, 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 yum. and you realize that you have nine pickled carrots, and you have a glass jar, and you eat your berry jam, and you go, yum, 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 yum. and you have nine berry jams, and you have another glass jar. So you get your glass jar back when you eat these, however, your empty glass jars do not stack. So, if you go out on a long adventure and you keep eating these, your inventory is going to be filled up with glass jars. So just keep that in mind when you're making the pickled carrot and the berry jams. Now, I'm going to move on to the beer and the wine. The wine requires wild berries, reed flowers, and a wine bottle. And the beer requires wheat, yeast, and a beer bottle. Really quickly, I want to show you that they both provide the beer modifier. If you can see right there, provides beer modifier, provides beer modifier. So these, when consumed together, will not stack. The modifiers are not going to stack. See what I'm saying? So, if you drink one beer and one wine, you're just going to get this modifier once. You're, and then you'll be able to have two more food buffs. But you're, it's the modifiers are the same thing for beer and wine. So you only need to drink one. And another thing... Oh, is this wolf really going to be like this? Guess so. Tch. 
Gotta be like that. Okay, moving on to what I was going to say next before I was rudely interrupted. So, the, the modifiers do not stack. They're both the beer modifier and the actual... They don't stack in your inventory either. But, say, you have beer and wine, you, you go out and you have more beer and more wine. I only have these for right now, but say you only have... Or say you want to go out with a bunch of beer and a bunch of wine, you can go out on your adventure with a bunch of beer and a bunch of wine, and you can consume it, and you'll get your modifier, but you won't get your bottle back. So, just keep that in mind with these, jam uh, with these jarred foods you will get the empty jars back but they will not stack in your inventory and with these these do not stack in your inventory but you don't get the glass bottle back so you can go out with a bunch of them and use them up and create more inventory space however they will be expensive because I forgot to mention I don't know why I'm running over there I forgot to mention that each one is five glass. And then the glass jar is one glass and one iron ingot for the, the jam and the pickled carrot, just, just so you know. All right, the last thing that I haven't talked about on the kitchen bench is the bread dough. I do want to note that I do not have bread dough in here because it spoils and it does not go in the refrigerator. You can't put the bread dough in the refrigerator. You have to cook it into bread or into something to um, to be able to refrigerate it. So. Bread dough, don't cook it, don't cook it. <laughs> Bread dough, don't craft it, unless you have moved on to your biofuel stove and you can cook it. But also, when you have your biofuel stove, still don't make your bread dough until you have biofuel. So, biofuel, First, here's the biofuel stove up here. Then, you have to go over here to the biofuel composter. And that's how you will make biofuel. And then you also need the biofuel can right here to fill with biofuel, which is what I have right here. So don't be making bread dough in your kitchen bench until you have a biofuel stove and a bio biofuel can filled with biofuel so you can cook it. Because otherwise, your bread dough will spoil in 800 seconds. All right, moving on to what else you can cook in your biofuel stove. You can use that bread dough to cook pumpkin bread with one pumpkin and one bread dough that will not spoil. You can cook bread which will spoil but you just need one bread dough to cook regular bread. I do want to note that bread gives you 10 health when consumed but what I forgot to know earlier is that the much easier to get cooked meat gives you 20 health when consumed. So whenever you're low on health, it's much easier to bring a stack of cooked meat with you 
than to make a bunch of bread, in my opinion. And it, the cooked meat actually helps more when you're low on health. So, just keep that in mind. I do not suggest making bread. I don't find it to be extremely useful once you already are all the way down to the biofuel stove and have biofuel, you can make better things than regular bread, in my opinion. That wolf is scaring me. Okay. Last thing that you'll use your bread dough for in tier three is the crumbled fish filet. You'll need raw fish and animal fat as well, that animal fat that you made at your cooking station in tier two. And right, that is right here. That does spoil. Also, what you make on your biofuel stove is your fruit pie. And your vegetable pie. And that is where your pastries come in. They also have meat pie, but they that requires mushrooms, and those are not in the game yet. So fruit pie and vegetable pie, you use pastries to craft. Well guys, that concludes the biofuel section and the kitchen bench section of the tier three. The last thing I do want to show you, and that I'm very excited to show you in this is, I, is it tier two? No, it's tier three. Aha, here it is. So once you get your machining bench, you can craft your canteen, which I have right here to fill up with water, and I use that for cooking quite often. It's The canteen is amazing. And then you can get your thermos. Oh boy, your thermos. Once you get a thermos, if you go over to your campfire, tier one cooking item, which, oh, I, I do want to mention, thermos, it, you need to be level 25 or higher to be able to unlock this. That's why it's tier 3. So you need to be level 25 or higher to unlock the thermos. However, once you're level 25 or higher and you have the thermos, oh buddy, you can craft the hot tea with 50 tea and one thermos. It gives you water instead of food, obviously. It gives you plus 25% health regeneration and plus 10% cold resistance. You could craft hot cocoa, which also gives you water when you consume it, but it gives you minus 25% food consumption and plus 25% cold resistance. You could craft the gorse tea which gives you minus 25% water consumption and plus 10% cold resistance. And the last thing you might want to craft would be the hot coffee, which also gives you water when consumed, but it gives you minus 10% cold resistance, plus 10% maximum stamina, and plus 10% stamina regeneration. Now, right now, you might be saying, cheese, come on. These buffs, come on. They're not that good. Especially tier three, you need a thermos, you need glass and steel and epoxy to make this? Are you kidding me with those buffs? But here's the thing, guys. You want to, you want to, you see a difference in the, in the foods here. All these foods, what do they say? Every single one of them says something. Just want to show you. Consumes one space in stomach. And that's what gives you your three food buffs. You have three spaces in your stomach. And if you are cool and an awesome chef, or is it talents? An awesome chef, and you have this gives an extra active food buff, plus one space and stomach. You can have four of them. That's crazy. That's awesome. As you can see, I do not have that one on this character.
I do have it on a different character. But anyway, what I'm getting at is, do you see right here? What does that not say? Consumes one space in stomach. I don't see that there. That's crazy. Well, that's why I'm so excited, guys. That is why I'm so excited. So once my current active food buffs go away, guys, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. All right, guys, it is morning, and I am almost finished with my active food buffs. But before I move on to these thermoses really quickly, I decided that it wouldn't be a good video if I didn't at least tell you guys which foods I used the most and which ones I liked. So I do want to start off with the vegetable pie. This one's really good. I really use this one for the minus 15% stamina consumed by actions. That's the main reason I use it. The melee damage is nice, but I use projectiles mainly. So, um, yeah. Anyway, the roast vegetables I, I use for the maximum stamina. And the last one I want to mention is the pickled carrot. One, I really like the projectile damage on this one, and the maximum stamina is great, but also because it's very easy to make. You don't need any fuel to make it. All you need is the one iron ingot and the one glass for the jar. Once you make the glass working bench and all that, obviously you need to get up to this tier. And you need one carrot. That's all you need. One of the easiest things in the game to make, and it gives you great buffs. So, um, what I want to mention, if you haven't gotten to the biofuel stove yet, a good substitute for the vegetable pie is the sweet corn soup and the creamed corn, especially the sweet corn soup for the minus 20% stamina consumed by actions, but the creamed corn too for the health, so take your pick on those um, before my character loses water let's uh let's do this so like I said I'm gonna take a bite of my three favorite foods two and three so, there's my jar that I was talking about okay as you can see I still don't have the thing just to prove it to you I just, I just still don't have the talent that gives me the fourth space in my stomach. So, just to prove it to you, I'll eat a berry. No other food buff, I just have the, the well-rested. So, right here, I'll drink this. This is gorse tea as, oh, here. So we're back to these thermoses right here, all these that I was talking about, finally. And, so I got my three active food buffs. And I want to show you that you can use these to get another one. So here's gorse tea. All of them look the same, but cocoa, coffee, hot tea, gorse tea. Here's gorse tea right here. I'm going to take that and consume it. It gave me water, as it said it would. And as you can see... It gave me the gorse tea thing, as well as my three food buffs. And now, you may start to see why I'm feeling so excited. But wait, there's more, guys. I still have my thermos. Let's put my thermos back in my kitchen block. By the way, this is how much storage is in the kitchen block. It's great, if you, if you guys don't know. It's huge. Highly recommend once you get to tier 3 kitchen block. Um, now, just like the beer and the wine, the Gorse Tea modifier will not stack with the Gorse Tea modifier. So I'll drink this Gorse Tea right here. As you see, it's just one, still the one Gorse Tea modifier. But, since these are not consuming spaces in my stomach 
See, this is the hot tea, not the gorse tea. Gorse tea is different than hot tea. Drink that. Look at this, guys. Hot tea. Gorse tea. Pickled carrot. Roast vegetables and vegetable pie. You guys, are you guys seeing this? Hot coffee. Hot tea. Gorse tea. Pickled carrot. Roast vegetables. Vegetable pie. And the well-rested bonus for me going to sleep. Do you see this, guys? Is this... So... Anyway, guys, this is a. Uh, this is the huge thing that I wanted to show you. This is why I'm so excited about these. This is, they didn't look that great. Like, you got stamina regeneration and stamina in this one, though. 10% is nice. And then you get health regeneration and cold resistance. These are great for the Arctic biome, by the way, because you get cold resistance with two of them as well. If you can get these in the Arctic biome, they're incredible. So, that is what I wanted to show you guys. And that is where I want to end this video. Alright, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. If you liked what you saw, slap that like button, poke that like button, smash that like button, do whatever you want to that like button, I don't really care. Leave a comment if you have anything to say about today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Icarus tips and tricks or maybe some Icarus gameplay. I hope this video taught you something that you may not have known before you watched it. Really quick before I leave, I want to show you that I drank all four teas and went out in the storm in the Arctic biome. I am still not getting the cold effect, which is great. I am getting the storm effect, which you get during storms, but I am not getting the cold effect, which is very nice. You get the cold effect really quickly in the Arctic biome, especially in the storm. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.